content in India than we used to use in 2001 or 2002 when we decontent came in. Both the per hectare use as well as the overall volumes. The overall volumes of pesticide use in India have gone up because cotton is being grown on 4-5 lakh hectares more than it used to be uh, grown earlier. So overall pesticide use after 15 years of BT cotton has actually increased. One other aspect of chemicals in uh, cotton is that of fertilizers. Today we have, we are supposed to have, the government is supposed to have and at least some people in the agriculture uh, sector are supposed to have the realization that chemical fertilizers are actually bad for soil health. That chemical fertilizer production actually adds to greenhouse gas emissions, adds to climate change, its use also adds to climate change and chemical fertilizer use actually uh, makes the government say, spend our taxpayers funds on subsidizing the fertilizer industry. We know all of this today. After 15 years of BT cotton, fertilizer use in cotton crop in India, both per hectare as well as overall volumes of fertilizer use have gone up by two and a half times than they used to be in 2001 and 2002. So overall agrochemical usage has actually gone up with BT cotton and has not come down. The second thing that I want to talk about is the fact that 95% of India's cotton is planted to BT cotton today. Last year was an exception. For the first time after experiencing a lot of new pests and pest resistance on BT cotton, Farmers went back to non-BT cotton. Last year was an exception after many years. 22% of India's cotton was non-BT cotton. But they are reporting that this year again BT cotton is going up. We don't have the figures yet. 95% of India's cotton is BT cotton. And remember, cotton was the symbol of India's freedom struggle. You all know what Gandhi caught hold of when it was Khadi. And uh, the symbol of our freedom struggle, Khadi, was essentially to say that other corporations, other multinational corporations cannot control our lives and our economic sphere and so on. That, you know, you're ruling us uh, with, with that kind of uh, trade. You're taking raw material and bringing back expensive Manchester mill cloth for us to buy and boycott began. Today, 95% of India's cotton seed is controlled by one big corporation, Monsanto, which no longer exists, incidentally. These corporations know how to morph themselves. And this we had seen in the case of Bhopal disaster itself. You all remember Union Carbide. It killed thousands. It no. continues to kill thousands. And when Dow Chemicals took over, Union Carbide, they clearly said, look, we are not liable to pay any compensation or, you know, we have no justice issues pending with either Bhopalis or India. Uh, and they washed their hands uh, clean. And uh, that is exactly that will happen with Monsanto now. Monsanto has been acquired by Bayer, which is today the largest agribusiness corporation. Monsanto itself was enormously powerful. The lobbying power of these corporations is, uh, you know, nothing that, that can be described in simple words. And they use these tools to essentially control their market and make sure that they have a perpetual market. The fascination that these corporations have with genetic engineering as a technology. Biotechnology is a vast subject. They can pick up other tools of biotechnology if they are really keen on helping farmers. Organic farming is also about biotechnology. But no, that's not their real intent. They're keen on transgenic technology essentially because they can get intellectual property rights far more easily with this technology than probably with any other technology. Genetic engineering today is a technician's job. Believe me, if you come across a greatly acclaimed uh, geneticist, please don't go garland them and think that they are great folks. It's become such a car shed job of uh, tweaking genes. And you know, one hears of horror stories in Canada and other places where 
students are doing all kinds of experimentation and just leaving these organisms into the environment. And these, uh, these corporations essentially have three tools by which they want to make sure that their seed business as well as their other input business uh, is in their control for all time to come. Those three tools are essentially one, intellectual property rights, and if these IPRs can take the form of patents, as in the US, in India technically we are not supposed to have patents on living uh, life forms, but they are getting patents on genes, even in India. BT cotton in its second generation is patented in India. Incidentally, Monsanto does have a patent. But when you have patents, uh, by law, you can prevent others from using that without your permission and without paying up. You just have to cough up whatever they claim is their royalty or their sub-licensing fees, technology fees, whatever name they give it. So laws uh, is one uh, weapon that they have. The second is technology itself. Uh, and hybrid is one such technology. Uh, if you sell hybrid seed to farmers and if they save seed from their crop, uh, then they will not get the same kind of crop that they have grown when they first purchased the hybrid seed. The next generation will not be true to form. And that is why they keep going back again and again to the company. And the company is must. I mean, it will have these farmers walking up to it again and again. And uh, in a country like India, Monsanto has devised a fantastic marketing strategy where they don't even have to go to the village to sell their seeds anymore. They are tying up with state governments uh, in big deals where they get 50 crore rupees, 100 crore rupees and so on of our money. Remember, it's all our money. Let's not forget that. Taxpayers' money goes to these corporations and the government then takes these 10 quintals, 20 quintals, 30 quintals of hybrid maize seed and distributes it to farmers through NGOs. You know, service provider NGOs are happy to do these kinds of wrong things and they are distributing these seeds to farmers and they are even doing it as a bribe saying that for the first three years take it free of cost and uh, they are giving it uh, to farmers and we are talking about lakhs of farmers especially tribal farmers of this country along with class 1A and 1B pesticides and for any farming community, any farming family if you don't keep your own seed for two seasons, that's enough to create dependence on others in perpetuity. You have to depend on that external uh, seed source for all time to come if you don't keep your seeds for two seasons. And they're luring them by giving them free seeds for three years. So just want to say that technology is the other tool that they have other than patents and other intellectual property rights. The third tool that they have is market moves. They basically will wipe out competition. And that is what is happening when Monsanto is acquired by Syngenta. You make sure that but there are no are. other... Similarly, Syngenta has been purchased by Chem China. Dow and DuPont have merged uh, together. And where there used to be the choice of at least six big corporations, farmers now have to choose between three corporations. And there's clear scientific studies that show that when uh, competition is wiped out, especially after GM seeds uh, are uh, brought in, seeds will uh, be priced at exorbitantly higher prices, 400 times more than what we have known them and so on, and farmers have no option but to still buy it. You have no option because you haven't kept any seed with you. If you want to survive, you will have to buy uh, their seed. They will decide how much quantity of seed will be sold, they will decide what brands will come into the market. And uh, in the past 15 years, we've seen in BT Cotton that every few years, they will create an artificial shortage and farmers are out on the streets protesting for BT Cotton seeds and then they buy in black market at very high prices. And at the end of the day, there is no guarantee that you will actually harvest it. So, uh, coming back to the 15 years experience of BT Cotton, other than Monsanto gaining its monopoly, both by way of patents, by way of wiping out competition, as well as by introducing hybrid cotton seeds in India, where nowhere in the world BT Cotton has, has been sold as hybrid. 
not in China, not in the US, not in South Africa, not in Australia. Only in India they sold DT cotton as hybrid technology. And uh, we also find that today the best for which BT cotton was created has developed resistance and you are all probably familiar and you have seen news reports of uh, states like Punjab where because of the pest incidents farmers have actually written suicide notes saying that I am committing suicide because in this cotton crop this year <coughs> I have incurred losses. So that's the story of BT cotton. 